Hey guys, welcome back to Design News, where I cover the latest and the greatest of what is happening in the design world. This month we have Figma's $100,000 competition that anyone can join, Google's brand new AI model that will change the way designers, creatives, artists will use design tools, really cool new updates to their favorite design tools as well, and so much more. So one video for everything that you need to know for this month. If you like this, of course, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos every single week. All right, so the first one is Figma Makeathon. This is a worldwide design competition that they've announced today and they're giving away cash prizes of up to $100,000. Insane. There are many cash prizes, many Many different winners will get different cash prizes and the grand prize winner will get $50,000 as cash. That's crazy. The whole concept of the competition is easy. We'll have to create something useful or something that solves a particular problem using Figma Make. During the competition, you'll get Figma professional plan for free. So you'll be able to use it regardless of whether you have the professional plan or not. I'll put a screenshot of the submission guidelines as well. You can participate as an individual or as a team. So if you're a design team or a company, you can join this as well. They will, of course, judge you based on how cleverly you've used Figma Make tool. Also, how amazing the prototype is, how innovative it is. And at the end of the day, you'll have to share your Make files with them using a certain email, of course. All of the guidelines and everything will be in the description as a link. And each prize is divided into different criteria. So you could be most creative and you'll get $10,000. If you're most innovative, you'll also get $10,000. For the best prompts, you'll get $7,500. And of course, you'll get the Figma professional license for free. So you can enjoy that as well. So best of both worlds, I guess. Talking about how designers use tools and things like that. Well, Google just announced and launched something that is breaking the internet. It's going viral. It's trending everywhere. It's called Google's Nano Banana. And Nano Banana is an AI model they've built over their existing AI models, which allows you to manipulate and edit images on the go as if you were a Photoshop Pro. That is how most designers are defining it. You can do a bunch of things with it all inside either Google's AI Studio, which I'll have a link in the description for, which is again free, or inside Google Gemini. If you're a developer or a company who wants to use it in their own products, you can as well with the Google Gemini API. So it's not just restricted to their tools. Now, what it does is insane. If I want to combine a dog and a lady sitting in a park, it will combine those two images and create a new image which looks very realistic and very professional. You can even take an existing image like I did with like a landscape. You can ask it to add hot air balloons and it will add hot air balloons in the air. You can, add, you can ask it to change someone's t-shirt. For example, I can make my t-shirt into like a red t-shirt or like a suit or like a kurta pajama if I wanted to. So whatever I want to create, I can basically ask it to do it and it will manipulate the image for me. And it's so good, it's so realistic, it makes you feel like someone did this manually in Photoshop. That is why designers are comparing it to Photoshop too. This is dangerous for Photoshop because Photoshop has editing tools as well as AI tools, but this is a standalone AI tool. Now, there are a lot of clever use cases for this. One is one great one is interior design. You can take a picture of a room. You can ask it to add like a dining table that you saw on Pinterest. You can ask it to add those things as well. So it's not just reimagining photos. It's also manipulating them and smartly editing them. You can even ask it to add shadows, change colors. You can essentially do with AI in Google Gemini. And it's super powerful, super effective. I tried it on my own. I tried it for like 20, 30 minutes and it gave me some very promising results. I even asked it to edit the AI creations. So it can do that also. So it's layering AI over and over. Again, something which is insane. I ask you to go try this out. It's so cool for your design projects as well. You can ask it to change stuff in your UIs. And it will do that because at the end of the day, that UI will be an image, isn't it? I mean, that is something for you guys to experiment with. Go check it out. I think it's really cool. All right, so one tool that I've really been enjoying lately, it's called Webflow Interactions. And it's super powerful and super lightweight to create these magnificent, 3D, 2D animations on your websites. It's a part of the already existing Webflow toolkit. So there isn't a large learning curve if you already use Webflow. 
Apart from that, you can access many different web animations and customize them to your liking. Things like scroll animations, parallax, hover animations, text stagger, things like that. Just web animations which have become very essential in today's world. What's super exciting and it's sort of a new concept is saving these animations for later. So once you create an animation, you can save it, give it a name, and then apply these animations to any component throughout your web project. So it's as if you're saving a design component. So ability and saving time is just the perfect word for this. You can even import things like spline scenes, 3D objects, and even after effect animations. So if you find something on those platforms and you want to import it into your website, it's going to be super easy with this. And you can edit and customize this inside the tool. If you're someone who uses timeline based tools like after effects, etc., this is going to be perfect. If you want to learn more about this tool, learn how to use it, find tutorials, and even try it in your own projects if you're using Webflow or if you're new to Webflow, make sure you click the link in the description. And I'll also give a link and stuff like that on page. This video was made possible because of Webflow. They help sponsor the channel and they're a huge support. So make sure you click the link to support the channel as well as the people who support us. So go ahead, do it. A lot of you guys use Spline, I'm sure, or have used Spline before. Now, Spline has gotten some really cool updates which take your 3D designs to the next level. Okay, so the first one was liquid glass support in HANA. HANA is their 2D animation tool or 2D editor inside the browser. It's really cool because you can, add, you can essentially create like lottie animations essentially with glass effects, which is really cool. And it's all three dimensional looking. So it won't be like a flat design or like a workaround for glass. It'll be like a realistic glass for sure. Apart from that, one thing that I'm excited about is the 3D projections. Essentially now what you can do is you can create stackable 3D elements. So you can stack 3D elements on top of each other. Earlier you just had to create something which was on different dimensions, essentially different x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, but here you can just create something stackable. You And these stackable elements will stay stacked on top of the other. No matter what edits you make to like the base 3D, anything that is stacked on top of that base element will stay stacked. Like this is a good example I'm showing on screen. I think this is a perfect example of how it can work. This makes everything so much easier. You can make something a fixed position essentially in 3D space and everything moves around it. I think that is solid. That is like the best explanation I could give. Again, I'll have relevant links so that you can check it out and try it out on your own. Okay, so the next update is big for design and no code. Framer just announced today, again, $100 million funding investment in their business. And they're announcing a lot of cool things that they'll be pursuing with all this money that they've raised. They are now valued at 2 billion US dollars led by their already existing long-term partners, which raised funding for them. And something that they highlighted in their blog was they're gonna deepen their investments in AI. Something that most tools have pursued, even companies like Adobe are pursuing, this would be a natural kind of move for them. They already have some basic AI tools, like they have their, of course, Framer Builder, which essentially allows them to build things, you know, like build an app or build a website with just AI prompts. That is already cool, but this will be taking it to the next level. They're also going to focus on building more inbuilt tools like CMS, improving the CMSs, advanced analytics, creating logins, registrations, memberships, stuff like a lot of things that can change in the design industry. Before Framer or Webflow and tools like that, the design industry worked differently. Jobs were different. Companies thought of things differently. But now if Framer changes, the design industry changes as well. That's, that's the analogy that I have. Remember Stitch by Google, the UI design tool that Google has launched? They basically bought an AI powered UI tool and then they've just built something on that, which is again, which is fine. They're basically turning this now into like a canvas. So essentially now, just like in Figma, you can check out a canvas, user flows, etc. Here in Stitch, you'll also be able to do that. So now once you write a prompt, it creates multiple UI screens. It creates all of them together inside a canvas and you just scroll through and you go through all the different screens. And this helps you also kind of track consistency according to them. So it'll help you create consistent. So it's not just creating random screens. It's also generating posts essentially. And then you can drag around stuff. They're also bringing responsive design. Um, it's, I don't think it's public yet, but they're showcasing and teasing it. 
basically being able to generate multiple screens responsively and generate different screens for different screen sizes as well. So just showcase everything at once. So it won't be, oh, generate a website. It'll be generate a responsive design for this, 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 and it'll generate something. And it will actually be responsive inside the browser, inside the tool. So you don't have to take it to Figma and make it responsive. It's already responsive. And then you can further edit it based on that responsiveness as well and kind of make tweaks for that responsive design. And of course, in general, better UI designs. Earlier it used to be inconsistent. Now they're promising better consistency. Again, they have an entire team working on this and they're very serious about this. So really excited to see the future with Stitch by Google, which earlier used to be Galileo AI. Surprising. If you're an Adobe user, you can now get creative out for free with this cool new giveaway by Howard Pinsky. If you don't know Howard, you probably are not a designer. <laughs> he started his podcast, which is a really cool podcast. He secured a few Creative Cloud codes to give away, which is essentially giving you free Creative Cloud for a certain amount of time. If you want to check it out, I'll have a link in the description. I just wanted to share this because a lot of you guys use Adobe tools and this would be a nice addition. You can get stuff for free. If you're a student, you'll, you might get benefits from this, so why not? Now Figma also updated a few things here and there for both free and professional users. Of course, they introduced new scatter brushes in Figma Draw. So if you're a Figma Draw user, that's good news for you, but I'm not, so I won't stretch it out. I were to see more ways to edit images with AI. Now, this is something that would be interesting for most of you. Number one, Gemini 2.0 Flash is now available. So apart from GPT, you can even use Gemini 2, which is really good. I'm really interested to see how Google's banana will fit in here, Nano Banana. But apart from that, you can now boost resolution and make edits for multiple images at the same time. So if you want to remove backgrounds for like 10 images together, you can do that. You can select all of them up to 25 images and you can do that together. If you want to boost resolution for those images as well, you can do that as well. Unfortunately, you re I really can't make edits for multiple images right now, I guess. That's something that's sort of missing. I would love to see that in the future. Now they also have a new password protection feature for Figma for publish sites and make projects. So if you're using Figma sites or Figma make, this could be useful for you. And of course, a bunch of small new updates, I'll have a link in the description. So if you want to read through them, the tiny ones, you can go through and do that. All right, guys, that is it for today's design news. I have videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're not, and if you haven't clicked the bell icon and set it to all, you're missing out on the design industry, on the design world, so make sure you do that. Also like the video if you did, share it with your design peers and friends. I'll see you in the next video next week. Until next time, take care. God bless.